The podcast that you're about to enjoy is part of the Low Tree Studios podcast network. To enjoy more great podcasts like this one, visit LowTreeStudios.com. From Low Tree Studios, featuring topics that serve, <clears throat> excuse me, as an informative and entertaining break from life's daily grind, this is the Jason and Mindy Podcast. My name is Jason. And my name is Mindy. Hello, wife. Coming up, a woman in Australia had no idea she was rich. That's right. I'll explain. Plus, I'll share a gift the Nike company gave to its workers. Uh, a big cat is a big problem for this New York couple. I'll reveal. Plus, the most memorable logo of all time. Wacky but true news. Things for men to not go cheap on. Uh, and things that are almost better than sex. And Mindy will share what? I'm going to surprise you. Oh, you're not going to tell me. Mm-mm. Ooh, it's going to be a surprise to everybody, by That's the right. way. Uh, so welcome those of you listening uh, on CastBox or on your favorite podcatcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. A lot of you listen wherever. We're not doing it live this week. We missed last week. We apologize for that. Um, and we don't want to miss again. Yeah, so we're doing it in advance. We had some time today. Uh, we probably should be doing other things, but we decided to do this instead. It'll free up Wednesday evening for us so that we can get some stuff done mm -hmm. and prepare for what's to come in the coming weeks. Uh, we are still on pace. We're doing our thing. Uh, had fun weekend this weekend, though. It's nice to take a little bit of a break because uh, literally we have been nonstop <clears throat> for weeks now. What's going on with your throat? I don't really know. Mm. I don't really know. But you want to talk about that? Or maybe, yeah, okay, we'll talk, we'll talk about that then, I guess. Uh, anyway, we've been nonstop for weeks now, and so it was a little, we took a little bit of a, a break. We, we did a few things, not many things, uh, but of course, we had the gigs, so um, the band had the gigs. So we, we stayed in Agora Hills last night, it was only about an hour away, so we, we probably likely could have just come home, but. Uh, after the gig, I was really grateful that we did just only get a hotel that was right up the road because I was pretty damn tired. Yeah, it was a long day. It was. It was fun though. It was. We had fun. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy was awesome. They I, are an amazing. Incredible band. band. Um, yeah. And I, I think we, we were a, a, the perfect opener for them. You know, we had about a 30 minute set. It was very, very organized. And, you know, being, being the musicians that we are and, and our experience in doing it for such a long period of time, we knew, you know, we needed to get off there right away and, and, and get, give the, uh, the headliner time to set up. And they did, they had all their stuff set up. It was really, really, really cool the way they set it up. Uh, you know, they could, you could tell they've been doing it a long time, but that place was packed, jam packed, mm -hmm. uh, to watch big bad voodoo daddy. And we had a decent crowd for us that wasn't as packed. And if you don't but, know who they are, uh, look them up, of course, on YouTube. Um, but they are um, like old school like swing, big band, yeah, big band for swing. sure. Swing. They even played like a Coco Cabana type song. I don't know if that's the wording for that, but it was it was different yeah. than their other songs, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, they, remember they were doing the train, Stephanie and David, and. Mm -hmm. Some of the others that we were with, they were dancing on the dance floor, small dance floor should have been a bit, a bit bigger dance floor. Cause a lot of people were standing and wanted to dance to the music. Uh, cause it's very danceable music. And, yeah. and we were dancing at the end, uh, had my, 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 my suit on, uh, and I was still dancing. It was hot as, as ever, but, uh, still, still had a really, really good time, really fun gig. You know, one of the things I do get disappointed about though, with the gigs at times is, you know, not everybody gets to hang out, you know, because one of the things I enjoy is, is not only playing with those guys, but but hanging out with those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesse left. I didn't even see him leave or say goodbye to him. Uh, Mark had to leave pretty early. Uh, Travis left pretty early. Not He hung out a little bit, he so that was cool. Um, Nick hung out longer. He was the one that hung out the longest. But the last ones there were me and Stephanie. We were all still there hanging out and enjoying the gig, you know. Uh, so that was a little bit, a little bit of a bummer. I do, uh, it, it's, it's, it's likely the last gig I do for a long time, at least here. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of looking forward to, to being around the band a little bit more and we just didn't get that as much. So, 
Uh, but that's okay. We all have our lives that we live and I enjoyed the moment, the 30 minutes that we got together, yeah. you know, and we were able to play the songs that we play. And I felt like we did an incredible job. The sound was good. The sound guys were amazing. You know, sometimes when you're the opener, uh, you don't get treated that well. And they, they were very, very nice to us and gracious and uh, accommodating. And of really? course, Oh yeah. And of course we were, we were professional as well. We were, you know, we were very thankful. I mean, I was thanking them a ton. I know Nick was also like thanking them for, for, you know, doing such a good job on our sound and. Oh, you're talking about the sound. Cause I, I'm, I had a different opinion of the, the actual place, the Canyon. Uh, I didn't, they, the way they talked to us uh, a few times was mm. not very cool. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. About putting our face masks on and you know, having to stay in a certain area. And yeah, they didn't really, uh, they were not very nice. They weren't very accommodating to our group that, you know, obviously you, they give you a plus one. Every band member gets a plus one. Well, where do you, where's that plus one going to sit? They don't really No, there was that. no organization and, you know, you just felt sort of like a third wheel, you know, like, you know, where do we go? Where do we, you know? Yeah. And we weren't allowed in the area that you guys were in either. So, you know, for us, it was, it was a little disappointing for. Yeah. And you were in a weird spot. You couldn't really see us. So in order to see us, you had to come in yeah. know, kind of front and center, but, um, well, sorry, it was that way for you, but for us, you know, I mean, in terms of just the sound yeah, guy, because I thought they did a great sound for you guys. The, you, we usually, uh, as an opener or as a, a no name band in a situation like that, you don't always get treated that great. And, uh, that wasn't the case. So I, I thought it was I thought it was fun. I, I really had a good time. Well, that's good. We all wanted to hang out afterwards a little bit, or that was the plan. But uh, David, David had some drinks. <laughs> David and our good friend Chad. Yeah. They were, yeah, they were ready to go. So I will say that I do like the way the Canyon does it, right? Mm -hmm. Opener goes on at seven. Main band goes on around eight-ish. Mm. <clears throat> The show was done at 9.30, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And everybody's clearing out. And we were, we were at our hotel by 11.15, 11 11.30, mm -hmm. something like that. I was in bed by midnight. I mean... That's perfect. That wasn't like, you know... That's perfect. <laughs> so anyway, we had, we had a really, really fun time. So I, I, re I enjoyed sort of... I, I don't think it's going to be the last gig. I talked to Jesse that I'm still going to be a part of the recording process for Jesse Vaz and Velvet Rain. And, you know, if we get gigs that are closer or if I have time to plan for it, I'll still be able to do them. Uh, but, for example, he's playing there again on the second... Uh, of October, we won't be able to play the gig because we're doing something that weekend. So he's going to have to hire a drummer, do whatever he's yeah, got to do. But yeah, so whatever. Um, anyway, it was fun. We had a good time. But let's get into our show. Yep. Uh, and the first thing I have to talk about is a woman in Australia said she had no idea that she was in possession of a 3.5 million winning lottery wow. ticket until she saw a post about the unclaimed jackpot on Facebook. Uh, she said when uh, she said she had no idea <clears throat> she won until lottery officials announced they couldn't find the winner. The winner said the money will allow her to retire. Wow, I wonder how old she is. That's awesome. If you got that amount, would you retire? Yeah, we'd be done probably. Yeah. Not. I, I, one of us would at well, least. Well, I mean, I would definitely quit my job and do something that I want to do. Yeah, you probably could, right? I mean, you really could just uh, chill out. You paid off house. You just don't live lavishly, you know. Yeah, you just got to chill. Kind of live within your means. I might still have a job, though. Yeah. I might I mean, still, I mean, think about that. Think, think about that, right? I just wouldn't. Maybe you do something more that in, in line with what you love. Yeah, I think I would still have a job though. Like, let's just put our, for instance, like if it was us and we're, we're on our way to Florida or whatever, you know, that, that, that money allows you to just go out there and get the home you really want. And, you know, you obviously have to tell the company, our company, because of clearances and stuff, you have to tell them that you got that massive lump sum. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you just like, 
I'd still work there. I'd, I mean, maybe let you retire, but I'd still work just so we have that extra little bit of money and we can really do what we want, you yeah, know, really. Yeah. And then maybe if I'm not feeling it, hey, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, speaking of big money, uh, this corporation, Nike, did something really nice for its workers. Nike gave its corporate office workers a week off in an effort to help combat burnout. The company shut down its headquarters last week to give staff some unexpected time off. The memo to employees was clear. Take the time to unwind, de-stress, and spend time with your loved ones. Do not work, they said. Uh, Nike also follows summer Friday hours, which typically entails letting staff leave early to take off the entire day on Fridays from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Wow, that would have been nice. Yeah, that, that's uh, pretty cool that they did that for their workers because everybody's sort of in that place with burnout. And uh, nice, you know, I mean, and think about even our company, if they did something like that would have been pretty sweet because a, yeah. a lot of us worked through the pandemic, not that if it didn't exist, it wouldn't have mattered, but you know, you're, you're a little fatigued from all that. You're a little bit worn out from all that. It's like, yeah, I don't really get a break. But our company does do that during the holidays. You know, yeah, I love that. We get to shut down for, you know, at least a couple of weeks. What, I, what I'm hoping is the, the, in the new location that they actually do shut down. Because our location, mm -hmm. so if I can, you know, reveal a little bit, I won't reveal a lot, but there's different sides to what, what, what Florida does and what, what Palmdale does in terms of the company that we work for. Uh, in Palmdale, it's more of a production environment where, you know, you're building it, you're building something. Um, and there's a little more demand in, in the build process than there is in the planning process. So a lot of times the shutdown doesn't really exist. They need to keep building. They mm. need to keep working through it. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that, and there's, there's pressure at times to, to go in and, and sacrifice your time, you know, and they'll actually give you incentives to pay you a little bit more that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm hoping on that side of things, that pressure doesn't exist and we will always get that time off. Yeah. I, I really hope for that because I just kind of don't like that pressure of yeah. feeling like you have to always work. Mm -hmm. um, next thing, a big pet in a little New York City apartment is a challenge. Uh, it's, it's a pretty huge challenge when it's an 80 pound wild animal. The, no, the owners of the pet in question, an 11 month old cougar oh my God. raised from a cub surrendered the animal before anyone got hurt. Uh, the cougar called Sasha spent the weekend at the Bronx Zoo being looked over by vet staff and then set off for Turpentine Creek Wildlife Refuge in Arkansas. Keeping a cougar as a pet is illegal and the case is currently under investigation by the police. Wow. Why would you do that? Why would you? That is a definitely never a would. wild animal that you should never have. It's enough to have a dog. What do they turn on you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh-uh. I'm good. Yeah. I don't need any of that in my life. Nope. What do you think, Mindy, is the me most memorable logo of all time? Um, Memorable. Gosh, there's so many. Yeah, let me let me go through a few here, like McDonald's, uh, Coca-Cola, Nike. I was going to say, just do it. Uh, e eBay, Google, Twitter, Shell, Adidas, Apple, Cadbury, Playboy, Audi, uh, the BMW logo, which, which do you think is the most memorable customers have voted on this? I would say Apple. Really? A survey finds that Apple logo is the most memorable by yeah. memorable by consumers. And Amazon is now more recognizable mm -hmm. than the golden arches of McDonald's and Coca-Cola's classic script logo. Uh, logos by Nike, eBay, Google, Twitter, Shell, Adidas, Cadbury, Playboy, Audi, and BMW also ranked high on the memorability scale by consumers. Yeah, I think... Um Apple did it it's right. It's a pretty good logo. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you, when you see that, you know that it's Apple. There's, you really can't. Well, most of those two, when you see them, you know who they are, but uh, it is a pretty memorable logo. I do agree. Well, well, let's, well I like, you know, uh, Apple on their phones, they have it on everything. <clears throat> yep. So, and it lights up. And so maybe that has a little bit to do with it. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe just the company in general has a good reputation. Some, some bad things about the company, obviously, but yeah. every company has that. Let's get into Wacky But True. Our 
podcast, our podcast dog, podcast, can't talk. <laughs> our podcast dog is tired. Yeah, he's spent been... a, spent a night a day at the kennel. At the kennel we go to, we didn't tell them to. Maybe the last time. I think he's a little sore too. He always runs up and down the cement. Mm-hmm. He's probably jumping on the fence. His paws look a little red too. Yeah. He looks really. He was sleeping on the couch out there in in uh, the patio. Mm-hmm. He's adorable. Uh, we're getting this done early too, because I, I kind of want to kick back and maybe watch some football and Ooh, man, just, I'm just eat. I'm hungry, super looking, hungry. Looking forward to the just night. Just chill, you know, before we start the fucking work week. <laughs> the fucking work week. <laughs> uh, cops in Austria had to have been more than just a little surprised when they got called out to a suspected break-in at a prison. When police arrived, they spotted a man on the roof. The man had been released from the prison after serving two years for theft. But as fate would have it, there's no place like home in the big house. Wow. He told authorities, life is so much easier on the inside. They feed you, do your wash, and let you watch TV. He actually thought if he could sneak back in, he would blend in with the others and the guards would not notice. Wow. Wanted to go back to prison. Hmm. Crazy. Uh, when a naked man was spotted Sunday running through a now a South Carolina uh, Lowe's home improvement, <laughs> witnesses called police. When officers arrived, they reported finding the man standing outside at a flower display wearing only a towel to cover himself. He told officers he thought he was being followed by people who were threatening to kill him. The man told police he was hiding behind a post when he heard his pants begin to to beep, his pants were beeping, and thought someone had planted a bomb in his oh clothes. Oh my gosh, mental illness. And thought someone had planted, yeah, I understood that. And, and so he removed all of his clothing. When employees saw the naked man, they gave him a towel to cover himself. Police asked the man to dress, but he said he would not because he was afraid his clothes would explode. Oh my gosh. Officers had to take him to the hospital for medical clearance before he was booked into the county jail. We had a gentleman. Okay. First of all, when you make your home, and Mindy likes to do this three times, by the way, when you make your home a store so people can come and walk through your yard and buy your old shit. Oh. <laughs> you get weird customers. Yard sale. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay? I was and, a, yeah. And we got a weird customer. Guy was one of the first guys he spent, first guys there he spent probably an hour looking through DVDs, old DVDs, picking out a shitload. Oh like, my gosh, so many. They're, they're a dollar a piece. He picked out 42 DVDs. And 42. He, and he, we could have probably sold all those too, by the way. Maybe. There was a few people there that were buying, wanted to buy Right those, around the time But he, he had looking. them all in his hand. Yeah. So he was looking around, perusing, and then he started looking. He dry, He said, I want to buy all these. And he, he said, I need to go get money. Can you hold them for me? So we bagged them up. And then he starts looking at our clothes. And I had these clothes, these old joggers that were like Lululemon. Mm-hmm. They're expensive joggers, but they don't fit me anymore because I'm a fat ass. And they, they fit him perfectly. So he goes over, first of all, this is this is an interesting story. I might run out of time here, but I don't care. Uh, this is an interesting story because <laughs> he, he goes over in front of David's truck, which is right by where our gate is, to try them on. And we're like, fine. You know, we're it's whatever. Go uh-huh. ahead. So Blue is on the side, uh, not on the side. So I let Blue out to go. I wanted Blue to be a little bit intimidating to the guy, you know, like, mm-hmm. hey, but Blue's staring at the guy while he's changing, wagging his tail. Mm-hmm bro. Come on, blue. <laughs> Be a watchdog, dude. Anyway, so the guy comes back and, and he says he's going to pay us later, but he already changed into the clothes and we're just like, whatever, go ahead and take them. Uh, he, and he said he was going to come back and pay us. Never came back. Nope. And so Mindy finally goes through his shit, which I would never have done. He left his well because I didn't know what was in it and I didn't, it was sitting on our front porch. Because he was going to come back and get and it. And I didn't want somebody to because you never know who you're going to get on your front porch. I didn't want them opening it up and seeing the crack pipe that was inside yeah, that bag, mm-hmm. which I had a feeling something was in there. But it was just weird. He just, he never, never came, came back. back. Never, never came back. Threw that shit in the trash. Did you finally throw it in the trash? Yep. Yeah. All right, last story. An alligator in Florida was recently seen 
steaming like a smoke bomb after taking a big bite out of what it presumably thought was a bird. Turns out it was a it was actually a tourist drone that flew way too close. Oh. The video ad, uh, caption admits the tourists operated the drone were novices and only using the device for the second time ever. I wow. wonder if uh, the alligator lived. Right. Kind of fucked up. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So, and that's your wacky but true news. So we're going to get into entertainment news here in just a second. Uh, Mindy? Yeah. Are you afraid of alligators? I don't like them and I really, one less is okay with me. Really? I don't like any kind of reptiles. You know, alligators, Snakes. I've heard, are not incredibly aggressive towards people. They avoid them mostly. Well, good. But they will attack your dog. Yeah, see? You know, a small dog, of course. That's why when we do move out there, I, I really don't want to be by a lake at all. Yeah. I don't know what's in it. I don't want to be by it. I'd I'm just you. rather be by the beach. I'm with you. All right, well, let's get into entertainment news. <laughs> It's entertainment news with Mindy. You're gonna get yourself some entertainment news. All right, welcome back to the Matrix. It's been nearly 18 years since the last time we plugged into the simulated reality. Mm. Uh, now fans are invited to once again take the red pill through a unique first look at the upcoming fourth movie. Uh, what is the Matrix.com, an interactive fan website dedicated to the Matrix uh, Resurrections, launched Tuesday, and it comes with the first footage from the film. You just have to know where and when to look. The choices users make on the website determine what they are able to see. Interesting. And Netflix is the Queen's Gabbit, Gambit. Gambit yeah. Uh, dominated the Creative Arts Emmys last weekend with nine awards. Mm. The Cold War era series about orphan chess prodigy Beth was honored for casting, cine cinematography, period costumes, editing, period makeup, yeah. original dramatic score, production design, sound editing, wow. and sound mixing. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if it translates to the Queen's Gambit winning Outstanding Limited Series at the 73rd Primetime Emmy Awards this Sunday. I loved it. it was which great. is today. Oh, really? Yep. Nice. Kylie Jenner has confirmed she's pregnant. She took to Instagram to reveal she's expecting her second child with rapper Travis Scott. Jenner, who already has three-year-old Stormy with Scott, posted a video featuring her positive pregnancy test and behind-the-scenes look at her undergoing an ultrasound. Rumors about her pregnancy first emerged last month, but until now, the Jenner and Kardashian clan have all remained tight-lipped. Mm. I guess I have a little more time. I'll squeeze this one in. <laughs> On Jimmy Kimmel Live Wednesday, Drew Barrymore discussed a recent dinner she had and her children had with Steven Spielberg, who directed one of their mm. very first films, E.T., The Extraterrestrial. She describes Spielberg as a father figure to her, and since Barrymore's youngest daughter, Frankie, is seven, almost exactly the same age Barrymore was when she first filmed that movie, Spielberg decided to have a little fun with her. According to Barrymore, he said, Frankie, I, got, I want you to say this line, alligators in the sewers, and she, and she did. And then he looked at me like, yep, she's got it. Barrymore says, uh, that was the moment where I was like, I can't believe Steven's directing my daughter at the same <laughs> age. This is just so surreal. That's cool. And that's your entertainment news. Thank you, Mindy. Uh, the Kardashian story, that falls into the category of who cares? <laughs> right? I watched the whole series. Of course, I'm a reality junkie. Yes, you are. And by the way, Survivor's coming. Can't soon. wait. Answer the question, the question of the podcast. It's coming your way real, real fast. Yeah, baby, you know the 
time has come for you to answer the question. Yes. Well, because yeah. we missed last week, we I did not get that question up, so we we're going to just answer it ourselves. Yeah, and it's it's you know well, just so you're understanding what we're doing. We've been doing this for a long time. We've been doing questions for a long time. Questions, uh, questions, questions. Question. We're not supposed to do that. That's, I know, that's, um, but I, that's, that's why I did it. <laughs> uh, so some of the questions we're pulling, so what we're doing is we got this card set from, uh, from Stom mm-hmm. and, uh, we pull the card and read it. Some of the stuff that we're reading is stuff we've probably likely answered in the years that we've been podcasting. Guess what? This one is. We don't care. <laughs> okay. I don't care. All right. So there's going to be repeats. How many questions can you ask over a six year period? Hmm. You know, over a thousand shows or whatever the hell we've gotten to. Or something like 700. I don't know. Something. That's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, so what's your dream job? That's on this card. So let's answer it. What's your dream job? Well, my dream job would have been something with interior design. Like it would have been so cool to do. HGTV. I know I've said this before. Mm-hmm. I just think just, I don't know, in some way doing that kind of work. Now, is that still the same? You'd still want that? I still would. And then also I, which I know nothing about, but I would, I don't know why, but I would love to build things like furniture, or just, I don't know, just build things, learn how to use wood woodwork. I've said that before as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are good answers. My, you know, I, that's why I like the, the question because it's changed for me a little bit. Um, you know, if you asked me this question 10 years ago, I'd say be a professional musician. Uh, if you asked me this question two, three years ago, I'd say be a professional podcaster. Um, those are still really fun and cool ideas. Uh, if I look at the two now, I would say musician would be the, the, the winner. Mm-hmm. But what I don't like about the musician part is I don't know that I'd want to uh, be on tour. Mm-hmm. I've become, as I've, I've, as I've gotten older, I've become more of a homebody. Mm-hmm. I really like being home. Um, so, you know, I am a project manager right now, which is a very challenging and oftentimes fun job, although the environment is a little stressful, this particular one. I think project management would would be great in a different environment, but I I don't know, you know, I mean, every job has its stress, so I'm not trying to avoid difficulty and stress. But it should be pretty fun. Your, your job should have a degree of enjoyment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so being a project manager, like say in a field that I like, like if you're a project manager for a major podcast mm-hmm. company or something like that, where you're excited about the product that you're mm-hmm. producing, right? Yeah. Um, that has evolved for me a little bit. So sometime down the road, maybe, you know, you become a project manager in something that you really enjoy right. as opposed to something that's, that's, that's important and you see the value in it, but maybe it's not in alignment with what your, your joy, your true joy yeah. is. Um, but yeah, I would say, I don't really have a good answer to be honest. Dream job would be probably a professional drummer. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, if I could be home every night, that'd be cool. Like being on a show like the voice, yeah, that's pretty right. Cool. Where you get to stay, you know, you're, you're working, but you, you get to be, you get to stay in one place. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be working all the time or tr- touring all the time and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah that'd be, a, that'd be a dream job for sure. Um, we don't have listener responses as Mindy mentioned. So we'll post, we'll, we'll say this one, we'll post it. Uh, we're, we're going to continue to try and do our show live. We won't be doing it live this week though. Just so you know, we're right on that, right? This is, this is a substitute for our this yes, Wednesday and as show. Things get moving along and closer. Um, we have talked about having, um, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan and Madison and had, Mad- yeah, had the idea to, Jordan had the idea to have them we may help us out. <laughs> yeah. I talked to him today a little bit and I forgot to discuss that. So I'll have to, do, you know, set up another conversation with him, but we've talked to him, talked to him a little bit about doing the remote thing and how he's done it since he's moved. Cause he moved from California to Texas and still does his podcast. So, 
Uh, but yeah, they, they will likely be uh, helping us a little bit, which I'm incredibly grateful for that. I appreciate those guys for, for doing that. Um, so yeah, but we'll post the question for this and it is, which celebrity would you most like to see in person? Oh, that's easy for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to be seeing that one, but I'm not sure I'll be able to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My dream almost came true. Um, anyway, that's the question. We'll post it on the social media so that you can respond. Uh, we'll put it on the Jason and Mindy Facebook page or the Low Tree Studios Facebook page. And of course, Mindy will put it on her page. That's where many, many of our responses come from. And we will share that on next Wednesday's show. Nope. Not this Wednesday. Nope. So there you go. All right. You want to hear what I've got for you, I do, Jason? yes. Because this, this little topic is for you. Oh, it's how to finally stop biting your nails. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't I, know if you can do it, but this common nervous habit can leave your nails mangled, sore, and prone to infection. But I never really see your hands looking they like used, that. I used to bite them. I used to be much worse where I got it to the point where I was in pain, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. um, now I... You know, these little split skin... I just kind of nibble on them. I, I, it's, a pro it's not a good habit. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> I am an incredibly anxious human being. Uh, I wish that I wasn't. It was funny. I was talking to my mom today, and she's saying that my nephew, Ethan, is also... She, she says... She, he just mentions to her, like, he just feels anxious. So I don't know if it's just in our family, in, in our, in the environments we've been, we're mm -hmm. raised in, but we're all just all very anxious people. <laughs> so biting my nails is par well, for the course. And, and he's so young that maybe he needs to get, find something that he can dive into. You Let's know? hope. Yeah. Because it's not fun being an, a nervous, anxious person. No. So, okay. So these are some pro tips for nibbling. Um, the number one is uh, how to stop biting nails. The impulse to bite your nails often has very little to do with your fingertips. As you just said, it's really out of um, like anxiety, boredom, stress, tension. And while the action may not help you better, help you feel better mm -hmm. about these emotions, it's actually acting as a security blanket. That's it. Yeah. It's like sucking your thumb, dude. It's not helping like you deal with child. the issue. And... In addition, uh, nail biting can cause halitosis, tooth decay, mm. infection, and bacteria growth around your fingernails. What's halitosis? Bad breath. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's if you had a dirty biscuit, you know. You're eating a dirty biscuit? Yeah. If you're nibbling, you mean your finger. You're yeah. talking about your finger? Dirty biscuits. Yeah. Okay. You just call them all biscuits? Mm hmm Interesting. <laughs> Where do you get that shit from? <laughs> Anyway, uh, number two is commit to uh, specific goals. So here's mm. how to stop biting nails the right way. Effective goals are specific and easy to measure, like drinking an extra glass of water every day rather than drinking more water in general. Mm. So once you decide to break up with nail biting, take a few minutes to make a concrete commitment, complete with definitive goals, and consider committing to an hour of no nail biting and gradually work your way up. I don't know if this is going to work for you. That might not because I oftentimes don't. <clears throat> all of a sudden I'm like, oh, shit, I'm biting my nails. You know, you don't realize you're doing it. Yeah, there's something in here about the unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is splurge on a manicure. Manicure. Mm -hmm. When you spend money and time, oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm, that one would work at a salon. You have a higher incentive mm. to keep your nails looking nice. That's not a bad idea there. Mm -hmm. So if you went like once, you know, uh, every couple weeks, you probably want to go in and. But I don't know that they like doing nails on people that on that bite their nails. Well, that's the the point. As you start. They'll do your cuticles, they'll push them back, they'll, you know, massage the fingertips with some oil, and they'll get them all looking nice, and then it's up to you to get them to grow out a little bit. But then you don't want them too long, because then that's also a, a thing for nibbling. I should I should get, like, the most expensive one, so that will, like, I'll go, I don't want to fuck that up. I just spent a lot of money on that. Mm. Hmm. So it's a good way. Um, so your manicurist may also give you some tricks of the trade, advice to uh, give you about quitting your bad habit if you'd rather not splurge on your manicure, a DIY it yourself. Nah, yeah. I would want the risk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you could put some stickers on your nails. I'm not fucking doing that. I'm a professional. 
Project manager. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want stickers on my nails. <laughs> All right. Um, next one is recruit help. So if you're a habitual nail biter, chances are you don't even remember when this habit mm -hmm. formed. And the action of biting nails is often a childhood habit yep. that many people carry into their adulthood. Yep. And over time becomes extremely difficult to quit, which it, is you. It's very difficult. Um, and it just becomes like second nature. You don't even think about it. Like you said. Uh, so set reminders or alarms. This is the next one. In the craziness of your day-to-day -day life, your commitment to giving up nail biting might slip your mind. Overall, the goal is to become aware of the habit and slowly eliminate it. Uh, one of his suggestions uh, for how to stop uh, biting is advising people to create like little reminders that draw attention back to the initial goal. So like at, you set a little ding and then... It's like, oh, okay. You know, it'd be, you know, it'd be really cool if like, th if I could install like some loud buzzer mm -hmm. and every time I did it, it went, eh, oh, you know, like, yeah, I, like uh -huh. I knew and everybody knew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. Well, that may one day be a thing. Maybe. Anyway, cut your nails really short as soon as you make the commitment. I've to, tried that one. Yeah. Doesn't work, does it? No. <laughs> I still nibble on them. Well, I guess we can pass this one up. But it does help yeah, for some that, you know, if you just started doing this little habit. So far, the one that would work was is the pedicure because I, I'm like, if I'm spending my money mm -hmm. on something, the money hit me in the wallet. That's where it matters to me, right? Because I'll go, well, fuck, I just did. I just, had, well, I just spent money and time, time uh -huh. and time and money to go see somebody to fix up my shit. I'm not going to wreck it by putting it in my mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and also too, like if they put a clear coat on your nails, cause they do sometimes with men, um, it, you're not going to want to nibble on that. Yeah. You know, anyway, good point. Next one is chew gum or mints at the start of quitting your habit. You may need to replace nail biting with a neutral mm. habit, such as like chewing gum or I do not mints. like chewing gum. And you're not one of those people. Yeah. And the last one is find new ways to manage anxiety. If you're wondering mm. how to stop nail, uh, biting your nails, learn how to uh, deal with the anxiety that's actually causing it. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, one of the things that they talk about in here is deep breathing exercises, yoga, <laughs> boxing, or long walks. On the beach. Um, well, I'm going to the beach, so I'm fine there. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should get back into yoga, though. I still, I still bit my nails as a yoga practitioner. Wow. That didn't help me. Uh, okay. you the best one is the pedicure one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that one. Okay. Uh, the another thing you, you, you could do is I got some other techniques, you know, you could put, remember that, remember that, um, that stuff we did, but it's such a tough thing because you touch everything with your hands, but there's this stuff that you the no biting for dogs. Yeah. And it's so bitter and uh -huh. gross. You just spray if that had, on your hands. Yeah. If I had that on my hands. Ooh, but the problem is, you know, you, you touch your hands, touch everything. Yeah. Oh, if I, if I bit that bitter shit. Oh yeah. 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 Well, maybe we should spray some bitters on you just like for dogs. It would take yeah. a while, but yeah. If, uh, hopefully it's not toxic. Uh, one of the things that they, they, that they would do for thumb suckers mm -hmm. is you would put hot sauce on, on their thumb. Right. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I did quit sucking my thumb, but it turned into nail biting. <laughs> But now I love fucking hot sauce. Oh, boy. Now I love hot sauce. Great. So see, that's what it that did. It doesn't work. Yeah. All right. Well. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Mitty. That was uh, that was pretty good. I enjoyed that. Thank you for thinking of me. I'm trying to find the... Yeah, there it is. All right. Fun facts. The average person says they go through 16 books a year. Wow, that's great. I read 16 books a year. Not me. I don't read books anymore. I know. I, I want to get back to that. Anyway, the base of Worcestershire sauce is made by aging anchovies mm -hmm. in vinegar-filled wooden tanks gross. for 18 months. Fucking gross. The fermentation releases insinate, a nucleotide that gives it a savory taste. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Do you ever wonder how we get to that point? We're like, hey, I got this idea for sauce. Right. I'm going to put some anchovies in a barrel. Filled with vinegar for 18 months. 
How do we get there? I don't know. It's so, cr- I appreciate those people but that did it, all that. I mean, Worcestershire is it's really good. good in meatloaf. It's one oh of my, my favorites. Goodness. goodness. I like it on a steak, too, by the way. Stephanie Modell's calling. Uh, I'm going to decline it because we're podcasting. Yeah. We'll call her in a minute. Uh, on average, uh, American consumers use more than 500. Uh, plastic bags per person each year. We've got to stop that. Yeah, that's We've got that's to stop it. Yeah. You should call it again. Well, well, nothing I can do about it. Yeah. Okay, well, um, the Three Musketeers candy bar got its name because each bar originally came as three pieces, each with a different flavor, vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. Really? Yeah. When did we miss this? In our life? I seem to kind of wonder about that. If I remember that or if that's just, I don't know. Like it came in like a box. Mm. One was vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. That is super interesting. But now it's just one. Indeed. Uh, And those are your fun facts. All right, so... I've got a list of things uh, men should not be cheap about. So I want to see if you might be able to help out and come up with uh, some things that are on my list. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Try to guess. I'm going to, the first one I'm going to guess is they shouldn't be cheap on a date. Mm, On a date. So these, so that's a good answer. And I'm going to go, good answer. Nice. Good answer. <laughs> but uh, these are these are more like things you would purchase or buy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think they should be cheap on a razor. Oh, that's good. It's number three. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. Razors. Yeah. Uh, don't be cheap with cologne. Oh, that's a good one, too. It's not on there. Wow, that one should be. Yeah, that's not on there. Um, Don't be cheap with your underwear. Oh, the, you got a really good answers. Mm. Not on the list, though. Wow. Not that on one should the be too. list. We don't want to see any tidy whities No, of course not. No, you you, you definitely need to, to, to not skimp in regards to the undies. Mm-hmm. I, I'm on with you on that. And just, I think clothes in general, most people shouldn't be. Okay, so men tend you, to drink alcohol right yeah yeah so don't go cheap on the alcohol number one answer wow so good job, number one Wendy. answer yeah. yeah number one answer how about some of these are odd I clothes in general not on there all right there's some that you you'll really really will agree with i think um how about don't go well like <clears throat> for you we were talking about the food issue like how about your health like don't go Eat healthy. Don't go cheap. All right. That, uh, I, this is in the category. Uh, it says, don't be cheap about canned ravioli. Basically, don't buy canned yeah, ravioli. Yeah. Get get good quality food. Exactly. Uh, so we've, we've talked about this before. It's fun. You know, it's if, if you've been married a while, you can have these conversations. If you're brand new in marriage, you don't want to have these conversations. But my we have these conversations. Like if I was single. My spouse. If I was single, this is what I would do. Mindy is, knows this. And if you've listened to the podcast a while, you know this. I, I don't want to cook. Will not cook. <laughs> and I... I hate cooking. It's got to be easy for me. It's got to be pre-made, sort of easy. Now, Trader Joe's and many places, not just Trader Joe's, have these really wonderful meals that are sort of pre-made and all you do is rip them out of the bag and put them in the saucepan or mm-hmm. put them in the oven. And that's really how, good. that is how I would live my life. Yeah. That, and, and I, and if I would, I would have salads that I would eat and they'd come out of the little containers that all be pre, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to do it. Oh, wow. I would eat uh-huh. healthy though. Uh huh. But it doesn't take that much effort to put, you know, some to, to some buy it. You're right. It doesn't. A- to buy it. Yep. It's easy to just buy it. <laughs> no, not to buy it. How long did it take you today to make all that food? This yeah, but about I mean, two hours. a week's work. I t- that's time. But I'm a time guy. <laughs> I can, okay. in, in a one hour, I can go to Trader Joe's and buy a week's worth of food oh, boy. <laughs> and, and no prep, prep time. You're going to have amazing lunches though this week. I am. You're right. And I have a wife. Healthier. I have a wife who cooks, so I'm happy about okay, that. So that was on the list. Canned ravioli. Yeah. So, so far you've got alcohol, razors, and canned ravioli. Well, canned ra- health in general. Yeah, health food. in general. Um, let's go with car. Ooh, that should be on there, but it is not. Mm, okay. Another really good one. Um, I'm running out now. 
So that's fine. Don't go cheap with repair, pa- repairing your cars. Maybe not on there, but you have your answers are better than some of the answers on here. I will say. Okay. Okay. So number two is don't go cheap on toilet paper. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. Don't yeah. Go cheap on don't don't buy the the one ply. Yeah. Uh, this is a really big one. Really big. Probably the most important thing on the list. Okay. Don't go cheap on condoms. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ooh, that, that should have been number it's one. It's number one, I think. Yeah. Uh, alcohol was number one. Uh, don't go cheap on mattresses because guys tend to go well, cheap on that stuff. I'm not one, but yeah. I like a good mattress. I thought we got a good mattress, but my wife doesn't like it anymore. You know, it was great when we got it, but you know, I, I really do think it's just your body changing over time. And we've had that for quite a while now. It's true. Uh, and then this is kind of dumb. Don't go cheap on paper plates. What, 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 what? Well, because you're not one that has to purchase those. I don't even think you've ever purchased those. So paper plates, there is a big difference. I get it. I mean, I, I camp and I use them and I understand the yeah. difference. There's just a heavier made paper plate that holds the food. You got those real flimsy ones that, you know, if you just tip it the wrong way, it's going to it's going to flex. Right. No, I totally agree with that. But why is that specific to men? I don't even yeah, know. That's why I don't like that answer because so much. Because probably men eat on paper plates. They're just lazy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So get a g- <laughs> well, you proved that. I mean, we're th- okay. We're lazy. <laughs> you proved no, no, no. that. I proved it. You proved so it. what's funny, I think, is don't just generalize and call me lazy because mm-hmm. I'm a hardworking person. I just don't want to have to work hard all day, come home and still work hard <laughs> to make my fucking food. Well, point point taken. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is umbrellas. Don't go cheap on umbrellas. You won't even. I'd try to buy them uh, for you. And you don't even use Might them. Might change in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Might change there. And then the last thing is batteries. Uh, yeah. Don't go cheap on batteries. You can't go cheap on batteries. No. It's Duracell. It's Duracell really all yeah, the way. Duracells are pretty good. Energizer, There's other ones. They're, they're, they're right there. So there you go. Uh, things to not go cheap on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing here, I have things that are almost better than sex. See if wow. you agree. Wow, better see than if sex. You agree. Yes, see if you agree. Food. Oh, oh you're already guessing, huh? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if food is on here. Um, food is can be orgasmic. No, I don't see food, but it should be. Boy, shouldn't it? Right? I mean... Sometimes you bite into something and it's just no food. so good. No food, but boy, you're right. I'm, I agree I'm gonna on I'm going to go with coffee. Mm. Better than sex? Well, sometimes the first cup of coffee Oh, boy. I know. We had a good cup of coffee this morning. Mm. Uh, uh, so, you know, we stayed down there, obviously. And we got up pretty early. We wanted to be back early. And just roll into Starbucks. I got I to gotta just... I, I, what I like to do, some people like to get fancy drinks. I do... So, fancy drinks for me are in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, later yes, in the like day. like a Frappuccino. Or but a- in the morning, give me a regular cup of coffee. Just yeah. put some cream and sugar in it. I'm good. Make it like I would make my coffee. You mm-hmm. got a you got a mocha. It was nice. It was kind of mm-hmm. nice to get. It gave me that road trip feeling you know, that we haven't been on a road trip in a while. And we, you and you and I, we're like every two months we're going somewhere. Yeah. And we ha- it feels like we haven't gone somewhere in a while. Yeah, we got that itch. Get, get the itch. Um, better than sex. Coffee's not on there. Um, gosh, I'm not sure where this is going. Well, so. let me get there. Let me do one and okay. then see where you go. Okay. Cleaning your ears and pulling uh-huh. some gunk out. Yeah. <laughs> Better than sex though? No. Mm. But it is orgasmic though to get in that ear. Yeah. Peeing on a full bladder. Oh, yeah. Just letting yes. that out. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, watching your kids score a goal. Mm. Better than sex? Nope. Parents? Dude, get a life. W- uh, no, I think you're going to get hate for that. Because, I probably will. Yeah. Yeah. I get hate for a lot of I shit. I think so. when you have your kids. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I, I, I get it, but I don't get it. You mm, know what I'm saying? Right. Mm. I'm right there with you. So I had some Angel's Envy and I did my old thing where I put mandarin oranges in there. Mm-hmm. Poured it over. I love the little alcohol mandarin oranges at the end. I bet you do. So good. <laughs> All right. This, I agree, is better than sex. Okay. Or close to it. A long foot massage. Oh, give yeah. Me that. Massage. Give me that all day. Any um, massage. When the stylist gives you a shampoo and deep condition. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that feels pretty good. A toasted bagel smothered in cream cheese. Not better than sex. No, not but pretty good. It's food. It's nourishing. It's nourishing. Taking your shoes and socks off after a long day on your feet. Ooh, that sometimes can be. But great. you got, you got to add, wash your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To that. Yes, you do. All right. After that, uh, crawling into bed with fresh sheets. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Like that. that is pretty good. A good burp, fart, or cry. Wow. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> Can you imagine? You belch, you fart, and then you cry. <laughs> Just wore you out. Wow. Uh, a big terry cloth robe for right after you get out of the shower. Eh. Nah. Sleeping in now that that's pretty probably cool. the best thing on the list. Yeah, yeah. Swimming in the nude that's pretty cool. I like doing that. Mm, I can do without. Like, How about this losing weight, especially a noticeable amount? Of oh, now that better than sex, right up there. Better than sex, yeah. yeah. And then the last thing, finishing an organized run like a ten k or a marathon. Hmm. I don't know if I agree with that for sure, but let's move on to this. Water cooler question, and it is this. President William Howard Taft was the first president to ever do what at a sporting event? Something mm. you see often. First one. A lot of people do this. I'll just narrow it down. It's baseball. Get a hot dog. <laughs> it was the first person to get a hot dog. Oh, the sporting first, event. Oh, no. Um... There's, is there something? Oh, he, oh, he, he caught the ball. He caught the ball. What ball? The baseball. He's the first to catch a ball ever. Well, at a, at a, I don't know. It's like a Maybe. ceremonial thing that they do at the beginning of a game. Oh, he sang the Pledge of Allegiance. He sang the Pledge of. I mean the anthem. <laughs> I pledge allegiance no. to the flag the of the United States of America. Shut up. <laughs> that's not. That's not it. That's a re you recite the pledge in the pledge of allegiance. Yeah, I meant. Remember that when we used to do anthem. that? Can you do it? No, Still? I cannot. Pledge allegiance to the flag. Oh, yeah. of the United States of America. For 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 uh, we, for under. No, uh, wait. For which it stands, I, I pledge one nation under God. Oh my gosh, you're messing me up. Okay. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the flag of the, of the United States, States of, America, of America and to the republic for which, for it, which stands, it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible indiv for, for liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Wow, we did it. Congratulations. <laughs> but I bet a lot of people can't do that. Uh, well, they don't do it anymore, I don't think. Mm -mm. No, he was, oh, let me, hang on. President William Howard Taft was the first to throw uh, the first ball at a baseball oh, game. Oh, yeah. It's a okay. ceremonial thing. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm not a sport person. You are not. I could just hear people yelling, Mindy! This is throwing the ball. Yeah, probably yeah. that one. I gave you a lot of good clues. I knew you wouldn't come close, so I was giving you way more clues than I normally do. Yeah. All right, Jason. How do we know that we're not living in a computer simulation? Now, I'm going to give you this little little thing. Okay, like so this, is, this is off of like Matrix, right? Consider this. Okay. Right now, you are not where you think you are. In fact, you happen to be the subject of a science experiment being conducted by an evil genius. <laughs> your brain has been expertly removed from your body and it's be, is being given, no, it's being kept alive in a vat of nutrients that sits on a laboratory bench. Mm. The nerve endings of your brain are connected to a supercomputer that feeds you all the sensations of everyday life. All right. This is why you think you're living a completely normal life. Do you still exist? Are you still even you? And is the world as you know it a filament of your imagination or an illusion constructed by this evil scientist? I have no idea. Could be. I, 
I, I, I think I heard you talk about something. This was years ago. Remember the ago. Matrix, right? Yeah. That's. I mean, it's funny that you you talked about the Matrix. I know, and then this. this is the question. Yeah. Um. I, thought, I don't think so. Of course, I don't think so. I know, so. but I, th- I heard you say something uh, with yoga like many, many years ago, like how do we know that what we experience is actually real or something like that. I thought maybe it would might. I mean, I don't think any of us really know it. Some of us do. I'm sure some of the more enlightened individuals in the world have a clear understanding of what it means to be a human and why we're here and all those things. And that's the answer we're all looking for. I think not all of us, obviously, like the guy who was bought 42 D div- or was going to buy 42 DVD players at our yard sale probably isn't asking that question to himself. Um, and that's not a judgment. <laughs> it's just a reality. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we all want to know the reason why we're here. I think we, we, some of us question it. Some of us reach to, to religions for the answer. Um, some of us reach to spiritual practices, whatever we got to do. But I don't know if that is the reality. Like right. there's some, there's some, some person controlling. Yeah. The matrix was an incredibly creative idea, but I, I think it's too, too gritty, too painful. Well, to this be is that. something also that I'll, I'll I'm going to read that. Um, Descartes, how do you say his name? Uh, de, Ooh. Anyway. I don't it, know. It's, it's this, even if we cannot be absolutely certain that the external world is how it appears in our senses, Descartes uh, commences his second meditation with a small glimmer of hope. At least we can be sure that we ourselves exist because every time we doubt that there must exist an I that is doing the doubting. Mm-hmm. This consolation results in the famous expression, uh, cognito ergo sum, which is, I think, therefore I am. I've read many people who disagree with that. Yeah. Uh, Eckhart Tolle being one. Oh. Um, not, not disagree with the sentiment being said there, but the whole concept of, I think, therefore I am. Because right. the problem is, is that we, and that we're going to get deep here and I apologize. The problem is, is that we think our thoughts are who we are and that is not the truth. Uh, our thoughts are, are a part of who we are in the, in the same sense that our limbs and our eyes and our nose are a part of who we are. They're, they're a, a tool to navigate humanity, but, <clears throat> but they are not who we are. And that's the problem is we, we, we manifest all these different versions of who we think we are because of our thoughts. When but the I, reality didn't, I didn't is, get it. That, that saying, I think therefore I am is, is what you're talking about. Like I take it as because I think I exist. Well, because you have the ability to think, yeah, you do exist. Yeah. And, and, and your thoughts are, yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. But I definitely don't think we're in some lab. I think it's a, yeah. it's a real thing, Me but uh, it is a reality, but we just don't know exactly what it is, mm. why we're here. What's the purpose? What right. are we doing? Some of us know, some of us don't, some of us still are still searching. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. As usual. Thank you for that, Mindy. You're welcome. Thoughts. That is your inspirational word for the day. Thoughts. Thoughts. Keep your face to the sunshine and you can never see the shadow. Mm. Your life is a reflection of your thoughts. If you change your thinking, you can change your life. Mm. I like it. And your last one for the day is if you see, if you can see a positive side to everything, you'll be able to live a much richer life than other. That's good. It's true. It's hard to do, but that is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mindy, for that. Appreciate it. Uh, And that is our show. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, Obviously, it's not live this week, but we'll try to get back to live next week. Things will get a little more challenging as we move and navigate uh, the next couple of months. We do promise you that by the end of it or early next year, things will start to settle down for us and we'll get back into a rhythm and it'll be an important rhythm. And I'll say why, because it is our way of, of, of remaining connected 
to, you know, many of you and some of the people that we, we know and love here in California. So we, we promise to continue to do our podcast. It just may be a little dicey in the next couple months, two to three months, potentially. We don't know what just, the, what just this hang looks in like. There with yeah. Us. We don't know what it looks like on the other end, uh, when we're going to have a, a, a podcast situation set up, all of that stuff. So, yeah. um, we'll, we'll let you know though, and we'll do our best to record when we have the opportunities to do so. Uh, we will still do it while we're here, of course. Uh, but we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And that, uh, that just about does it. Yes. That Bye-bye. just about does it. We love you guys. Uh, visit LowTrueStudios.com. Check out all our shows. You know what we do. We got a lot of stuff on there. All our shows will continue. We promise. We love you. Talk to you later. Bye.